What's going on everybody, this is Delmer and welcome. So in today's video, we'll be going over a super cool remote rendering feature for Magic Leap 2, as well as how to get it up and running with the Unreal Engine 5. And you heard that right, Unreal Engine 5 is what we're going to be using today. So to start, remote rendering provides ML2 users or developers with the ability to render super high quality 3D assets by using a powerful remote machine. In my case, I have a Titan RTX, which will be used as my host machine, but you can do this honestly with any RTX card, but it is recommended from Magic League documentation to use at least two GeForce 3090s or greater. In my case, I'm going to stick with the older card, but you can definitely use more power if you have better GPU cards. All right, so the first part, it's going to be the fun part. We're gonna be making a UE5 demo, then we will look at the prerequisites and all the stuff that you need to basically get this project set up. I'm gonna go ahead and scan my office and generate a mesh of the room. I'm also going to be doing this on the hallway and then in another area so that I know where we're going to be putting all these high quality 3D assets. What I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and get it imported or bring it into models. We'll combine meshes and then also scale it properly. And then you can just go ahead and import it. Then I'm gonna position it correctly so that it is based on where I'm going to be standing up. I also need to move the VR character. So just move a little bit and then just place some of these objects in the appropriate locations. I also wanted to generate basically what UE calls complex collisions. So that's what I did here. Now if you go into your Magic Leap Hub and then enable Wi-Fi Bridge, you're going to be able to basically stream to the remote viewer which is what we're gonna be using now. The remote rendering now generates a barcode. Then if you pull that up on your application in your Magic Leap, now you're gonna scan that barcode and that's going to connect UE with the actual remote viewer on your Magic Leap 2 device. You also need to allow permissions in order for this to work. This scenario here, I just wanted to show you the walls. I wanted to show you basically what we generated from the scan app, including the hallways and then the main room where I normally do the recordings. And everything is really stable. There's just some latency, but it's not that bad. I think it looks great and it's great for, you know, prototyping, for working with multiple people when you're designing and creating a 3D experience. You can see I'm getting closing here and things look pretty, pretty good. Also the flowers look good. I just add, added different plants. And then if you look at the statue and we get a little close up here, we can see that she looks, she looks really good. Flowers look great. Let's see how we can go and look at it. And the cone also looks really good. I also can grab the guns because the interactions on the VR template also work with the remote rendering, which is really cool. It's connected via Wi-Fi to my device. So it's, it's streaming all the information in this scenario, I wanted to do the same thing, but without the actual rooms that we scan, I just basically toggle visibility off and you can see how things look great. And they're positioned in the right places where I wanted to have them based on the scan room and the positions that I designated. So here's a sphere that I, you know, that I can grab. Here's some of the different objects that I, that I added. So I'm really, really impressed with the quality. Also the latency, it's like I said, it's pretty good. I ended up adding about, I think I have two extenders and then the main gateway is, I would say about 20 feet from this room. So it performs really well. Go ahead and take a look in here of how this looks in mixed reality. I ended up making the car a little smaller because it didn't fit in my room, but this gives you an idea what you can do and the capabilities of it. In addition to GPUs, we also have additional prerequisites such as remote rendering requires a developer pro or enterprise license. Magic Leap Hub is also going to be required. So you wanna make sure that you have that installed. You will need to be basically granting additional developer permissions when you open the remote rendering app and it launches on your ML2. And lastly, the OS on the ML2, is gonna to have to be a minimum of 1.1 Point zero, which you can install also from the Magic Leap Hub. There's also additional requirements 
such as Windows 10 or beyond, CPU and Intel i7 or AMD Ryzen are least for CPU cores. RAM, at least 16 gigs or 32 gigs are preferred. VRAM, six gigs or 24 gigs are preferred. You also need at least 512 gigs of storage. And then the NVIDIA driver, make sure that you have 495 or above. As far as Wi-Fi, you're going to need at least a bandwidth of 100 megabits per second. Wi-Fi version five or version six is preferred. This is also needed because we're going to be streaming basically a lot of data. We're rendering a lot of high quality models that are in 3D on the ML2. So make sure that you have also a good signal. All right, let's go ahead and get the Magic Leap 2 developer tools downloaded. You can download it for Windows or Mac. And once you get it downloaded, you can go into Package Manager and we're going to be installing the Magic Leap remote rendering. Just make sure that you grab the latest version and then just click on Apply, once you hit apply and install, you're gonna get a pop-up, just do next, agree, and then next, and we should be able to get it installed. It's gonna open up different pop-ups, just go ahead and close and reopen the Magic Leap Hub. Then in Remote Render, we're going to basically click on install, and that's going to install the Remote Render on your Magic Leap 2 device. Then we can open up Unreal, and then we're gonna be creating a brand new project, so go to Games, virtual reality, just give your project a meaningful name and then just click on create. Once we create it, there's a couple of things that we need to do in the project. So we need to actually close it and then open the config file because if you use DX DirectX 12, you're gonna have issues, at least I had issues. It kept on freezing. So we basically opened the default engine INI &I and just change the default graphics to be Vulkan or to be basically direct X11. That happened to be the one that people were using the most and the one that didn't have many issues. So we can go ahead and reopen the project, go to edit and then plugins, open XR. Once you go to open XR and verify it, then we should be good. This project already has that set up. I just wanna make sure that you're going over those settings. Make sure the star in VR is also enabled. We also need to make sure that the actual interface for your graphics is set to Volcam. It is because we set it through the actual, you know, i9 file, but you can also check in here. Okay, now let's go ahead and search for alpha and we're gonna have to enable alpha channel support for post-processing and allow through tone mapper is going to be the option. That way we cannot put that alpha information that we're going to need for the Magic Leap dimming features to work. So now if you go back, we're gonna be creating a brand new material. So it's gonna go ahead and create a folder called materials. And then we can create a material here, just call it simple alpha XR, I think that's fine. Just double click on it. And then we're gonna be changing the material domain to post process. And then we also need to enable a couple more settings in here. We need to also enable alpha. So just make sure that the Apple alpha is also set to true under post process post-process material, and add a scene texture node. This one is going to be hooked to the post-process input zero. Then we also need to create a, another component, which is gonna be a component mask. Then also another one, which is a one minus component. So this is so that we can invert the value that we're getting from OpenXR into Unreal. So connect the color to the mask and then only enable the alpha channel. And then just gonna go ahead and connect the opacity as well from the one minus. The last thing that we need to do is connect the color with the emissive color and which should be good with the materials. Now we need to make sure that we can use that so create a post-process volume. And we also need to make sure that we associate the material that we just created with the post-process materials. So let's go ahead and change this to an asset reference and drag and drop your material. Once you get this, make sure that we extend this all the way through. So there's an infinite extent unbound, which is basically going to output the entire post-process material that we are rendering to the entire scene. Well, that's a wrap up of remote rendering with the ML2. If you guys have any questions about what I show you today, just let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear what you're thinking as far as like this technology is concerned. And also consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell because it's gonna help me in making a lot more videos about this. Thank you very much, guys.